Just a quick introduction to Jacob. I'm very pleased to introduce him uh, as the first speaker of this uh, morning session. And as you see, he's going to speak about the emergence of Aldine pseudopotentials in systems with short range interactions. So Jacob, please, uh, you can start. So thank you very much, Michele. I want to talk about the joint work with Robert Seiringer from the IST in Klosterneuburg, close to Vienna. And this uh, paper appeared last year in the Journal of Statistical Physics and the references there. Um, I want to start by um, uh, just to put it into context. Uh, the origin of all this is uh, uh, investigations, theoretical investigations of the quantum Hall effect. And I recall here some uh, basic facts uh, that uh, the integer uh, quantum Hall effect is a quantum phenomenon in strong magnetic fields where the uh, Hall conductance of two dimensional uh, the electrons <coughs> shows uh, precisely quantized plateaus as a function of the filling factor density over field strength. I wonder how if I, can, uh, that's, uh, I think Jacob, you are still seeing the first slide. So probably uh, uh, you will change. Yes, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I, I, I mean, well, I, I mean, you have all beautiful faces, but uh, you are taking up <laughs> <laughs> substantial <laughs> part of the screen. So you I'm- You better move. Okay. Uh, so let me see. Well, okay, never mind. Well, anyway, the, uh, what is of interest here uh, is uh, the fractional quantum Hall effect, which was uh, discovered. I'm sorry, Jacob, uh, there is still the first slide. So the, are you changing the, the slide? Yes, uh, no, I know it's, it's the first slide, but there is a ah, pause. Okay, okay. You see, you see, uh, you see, I'm, I'm exposing uh, the second paragraph. Is that okay? Can you see? We don't see it, actually. We just see the, the title. So uh, I think... Oh. Uh, Try to, to, share again, uh, to share again the same uh, file probably or. Oh, wait a minute. So, uh, so I, uh, I see, uh, so you don't see what, uh, what I see. Yeah, we so, just see the emergence, uh, well, the title actually. So yes. the, the title slide. No, no, there is, now, uh, there is now slide number two. You don't see that? No, we no, see your no. title. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so what shall I do? Shall I go go back again and and? Uh, yeah, try to uh, share again. Probably. So I stop now, and yes. uh, then I go again to Bildschirm uh, freigeben here. Um, which is here. Uh, what do you see now? Yeah. Now, now it's perfect. Now we see. Now we see. And now you see number two. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then I continue. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, so it, wor it works perfectly fine. Yes. Uh, uh, now it works. Okay. It's a technical glitch. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The fractional quantum ball effect uh, it was discovered later, and uh, it has uh, have been several Nobel prizes awarded to that. That uh, among the one uh, uh, four years ago to uh, to Holday. There is also a bosonic uh, functional quantum Hall effect. Of course, it does not manifest itself in plateaus in conductivity, but rather in plateaus in the density distribution. Such uh, uh, fractional quantum Hall effect for bosons is theoretically possible, at least. It's very difficult to produce experimentally. But uh, uh, you should know about that, and that uh, is, uh, can be uh, mathematically seen if you consider very rapidly uh, uh, ro rotating uh, condensates. <clears throat> now the microscopic origin of the front hole effect is a, still a, a major res research uh, topic in condensed matter physics. Now the origin of this Holtein pseudo potential that goes back to 83 when Holtein uh, studying the inter effects of interactions, he introduced uh, certain interaction operators called pseudopotentials, which act on n particle wave functions in the lowest Landau level. And they have the Laughlin wave functions as exact ground states. Uh, just a side remark if you look at Holtein's original paper, you will see that he 
it did not uh, work on a two-dimensional plane, but rather to avoid boundary effects, he worked on, a, on the surface of a sphere. So uh, his uh, operators have a slightly different uh, look, slightly differently, but uh, uh, the idea is, uh, is basically the same, and, and, uh, but I will uh, stick to the uh, <coughs> conventional uh, description in, uh, that I have uh, particles move in two dimensions, which I identify with the complex plane. And I just recall uh, the concept here, the lowest Landau level, is the subject of L2 of, of uh, R2n uh, consisting of uh, wave functions which have the form of uh, an uh, analytic function and a Gaussian factor. And uh, the Laughlin wave functions, uh, there is one for every positive integers, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, which uh, because of statistics has to be even for bosons and uh, odd for fermions. They have this correlation, they consist of these correlation factors here and the Gaussian. And such functions have a filling fraction one over M. Uh, so as a general remark, everything that I say is completely independent of the statistics. It works for uh, bosons, fermions and Boltzmannons, if you like. Now, what, how did Hal Haldane arrived at these potentials? Uh, just by, uh, he considers uh, 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 some radially symmetric uh, two-body interaction, V, uh, uh, and uh, he does not, of course, care, care much about uh, the uh, mathematical subtleties, but uh, in order for the formulas to make sense, uh, well, it has to be sufficiently smooth, radially symmetric, and he simply expands this into a sum of projections on the angular momentum eigenstates in the relative uh, variables, in the difference variables. So, uh, so it looks like this. Uh, here, here is the potential, and you project it onto the lowest Landau level from the whole of L2, and then you get this uh, sum of the projections onto uh, definite uh, relative angular momentum with respect to the particles ij, and here are the expansion coefficients and these uh, eigenfunctions of angular momentum in the lowest Landau level are well known, they are just the, uh, the powers of C times the Gaussian. And so the Haldane uh, shooter potential operators are uh, the sums then over all uh, pairs of, of these uh, uh, pairs here. Just uh, a remark on terminology. Uh, sometimes in uh, the, the literature, in fact, quite uh, often, people talk about the coefficients as the shooter potentials rather than the operators. But that's not what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, um, uh, that's not the terminology I am going to employ when I mean talk about uh, due to potential uh, operators, I mean really these operators here. But the remarkable thing is that these operators have the Laughlin wave function as exact ground states. If uh, for a given L, then all uh, Laughlin wave function with uh, uh, with, uh, with filling factor one over M uh, and uh, M larger than L, they are exact ground states of these operators. Now, what do I mean here uh, uh, more precisely by this projection? Well, uh, uh, recall that if you have an analytic function of uh, N variables, you can expand it into powers uh, for every pair IJ in the difference variables, CI minus CJ with uh, uh, the, uh, uh, center of mass variables in, 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 in this uh, with respect to this pair fixed and the other variables. And what the projection operator does is simply to pick out the Lth term in this uh, Taylor expansion of the analytic function and uh, annihilating the other terms. So hence uh, we can regard uh, this P, uh, these uh, potential, these pseudo potentials as a zero range interaction. In fact, uh, if you uh, consider this as a, a quadratic form on states with relative angular momentum larger or equal to L in the variables x, y, x, j, then this operator is formally equivalent to a derivative of a delta function. 
this qualification here that it uh, you should look at this is uh, due to the Gaussian factor, so to say. Uh, that uh, because if you take this and integrate it uh, of the Gaussian factor and you are um, this condition is not fulfilled, then you will, will not get zero as you would for, for, for these contentions. So, so therefore this uh, qualification here is necessary. But you, if you like, you can think of this, the lowest one as simply the delta function and then the next one, for instance, what is relevant for, for, um, for fermions would be uh, 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 the first power here of the Laplacian. <clears throat> So that's a derivative of a delta function. It's a contact interactions. Now, however, <clears throat> you, uh, if you look more closely into this, you will realize that for a strong, uh, very strong short range interaction, in particular, if you have hard balls, this uh, simple uh, expansion into pseudo potentials is not a really a, a good idea. Uh, the moments which are these, uh, um, the moments of the potentials, that's to say the, uh, uh, the integrals over the potentials uh, with these uh, angular momentum eigenfunctions, these are essentially the moments, but uh, with, uh, with the Gaussian here, they not the, uh, do not even uh, need to be defined. If you have, a, if you have hard balls, then this uh, integral here is uh, simply infinite. So this is not, not well defined. So the goal of this, uh, uh, the whole enterprise here is to uh, study really short ranged and strong interactions and including for instance hard balls. Uh, this is in particular uh, in, important in the bosonic uh, case uh, where, uh, uh, where uh, uh, atomic gases uh, where, where uh, the uh, interaction is, is uh, often uh, um, uh, approximated by, uh, uh, that's a good approximation, uh, uh, approximation to uh, consider hard balls. In, in uh, case of fermions and electrons, of course, that's uh, more, uh, that's a different story. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, well, anyway, this is what we are, uh, what we are doing here. We want to uh, consider really strong short range interactions. And now it, it turns out, and that is the reason of this analysis, that the contributions of higher lambda levels to the interaction, they lead to a renormalization of the prefactors to the whole time potentials, uh, uh, potentials. Effectively, these moments need to be replaced by uh, factors which involve the L wave scattering lengths of uh, the potential. So, uh, so even if we are staying in the high, in the lowest lambda level, it's important. The, the existence of the higher lambda levels is uh, is really important here. Uh, the, the work presented here is a is a natural generalization of a, a paper by Mathieu Levine and Robert uh, from 2009, where they only considered the lowest L sector in the bosonic case. Uh, also, for people who might be uh, familiar with that paper, um, uh, you will notice that there is a, a, a here in, in what I am saying, uh, the lowest L sector in the bosonic case, uh, L equal to zero, is a bit special because I formulate here everything strictly two dimensional. So you will have this logarithmic potentials, etc., uh, which in, in the uh, uh, in this Levine siring paper was not the case because they consider always uh, a little bit of smearing in the uh, uh, direction perpendicular to the two dimensional case. I, I will co comment on that later. This is just that, that you, uh, if you, if you should uh, so happen to be familiar with, with that paper, I make this remark. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to be precise and let's consider the uh, exact model. So we start with the one particle magnetic Laplacian. Uh, we uh, uh, take the, uh, uh, the magnetic uh, strength, uh, choose that so, so that everything looks as uh, simple as possible and shift also the ground state energy. And then uh, the one dimensional uh, magnetic Laplacian looks like this. This is the uh, perpendicular coordinate here of, of uh, a two dimensional uh, coordinates. 
and uh, it, its kernel is the lowest lambda level in one, one variable, which is just uh, the span of the, uh, of the powers. It's uh, the analytic functions in, in one variable. Now, if we have now a radial uh, and compactly supported potential, V and interaction potential, and some parameter A, which is going to be our scaling parameter, which will tend to zero, we want to have this uh, short range. Uh, so we want to scale down really to, to zero, but at the same time, in order to uh, keep the information about the potential, we will scale to uh, increase the strength. And so the potential, the Hamiltonian we are considering depends on this parameter A. And it is the, uh, uh, the free Hamiltonian uh, to begin with. And then there is the interaction where we have scaled the potential so that uh, the length is scaled by, by, uh, by uh, the, the parameter A and, and strength by one over R squared. And we are interested in the regime where this is very small. A is very small. Now, to motivate the scaling, uh, note that the Laplacian scales like the square of an inverse length. And the parameter A, it can be re regarded as a ratio of the scattering, uh, of the scattering length, the, the usual standard scattering length of this potential uh, to the magnetic length, uh, which is uh, order one in our units. In fact, in our units it's one over square root two, but that, that doesn't matter. Anyway, so we are uh, really considering potentials of uh, if you think of uh, V having a compact support, well, as, as we do, uh, the, the range of V will shrink with A and become much, much smaller than the magnetic length, that is to say the cyclotron radius. So it's important to keep this in mind. When uh, the parameter goes to zero, then this uh, uh, interaction potential may create states in arbitrarily high lambda levels. And although we are eventually interested in the lowest lambda level, the effects in the lowest lambda level, it is essential to keep the kinetic energy in all lambda levels to co control the short range structure of the potential. And what the effect it has on the spectrum in the lowest lambda level, it, it takes a little bit uh, of thinking to, uh, uh, to realize this, that we, we cannot just cut everything, uh, everything off and, and stay in the lowest lambda level. We really have to keep the, the higher lambda levels. However, the fact that uh, <clears throat> the Hamiltonian leads out of the lowest lambda level is uh, reflected in the type of convergence uh, that we consider. It is natural to use convergence of resolvents uh, which uh, suppress states uh, components in higher lambda levels. The uh, components in the higher, uh, of, of state in higher lambda levels which contribute to this renormalization of the prefactors, they so to say disappear. They, uh, they wander out of the Hilbert space if you like and, and uh, considering resolvents is a very nice way to take uh, care of that. That's so to say a general uh, uh, principle or idea which uh, can be useful also in other contexts. Now I want to, well, I had already defined the uh, pseudopotentials, potentials, but I'm now going to define them in a, in a uh, slightly more convenient way. Uh, of course, these are the same pseudopotentials, potentials, but uh, it's just a, a definite way of, of, of writing them down uh, rather than saying I have this Taylor expansion and then I, I, uh, I take out uh, so everything uh, except the, uh, the Lth uh, coefficient. We do the following. We, uh, we introduce a sequence of closed subspaces of our, our Hilbert space. The big Hilbert space is the full L2 space uh, including all lambda levels. Then there are, is a, a decreasing sequence of uh, spaces B, uh, B is so to say a, a tribute to Bachmann. And uh, they uh, consist of uh, wave functions of the form, uh, here is an analytic function, and uh, a factor uh, of to the power L. So these are uh, so to say uh, wave functions which have at least L, uh, angular momentum in uh, all channels in, in, uh, with respect to all the difference variables. 
B0 is just the lowest lambda levels and the functions in BL, they have relative angular momentum larger or equal to L with respect to all pairs. Now on this uh, BL, uh, these projections uh, turn out to be uh, uh, possible to write them in the following way, which is the co uh, convenient way for, for doing computations. Uh, and, and we also introduce a notation, so to say HL is uh, this, uh, I'll hold them to the potentials, but with this uh, normal, natural normalization factor, one over pi L pair. pair. D stands, so to say, for diagonal or, or delta or, or whatever. Uh, and this is now a, a, a concrete formula, how to uh, project down uh, to this uh, angular momentum L. If you have a function of, of, of two variables, psi is a function of two variables with the uh, phi analytic and of uh, which contains a power uh, z minus c2 to the power l, then what I do here uh, is to, uh, so to say, cancel this, uh, to cancel the uh, z1 minus c2 to the l power and then uh, put the other uh, factor on the diagonal and they integrate. So you see this uh, uh, is a reminiscent of, of, a, of a delta function where, where I have simply canceled this factor here. And one convinces oneself that this is really a true statement. Uh, this was already uh, defined and, and this is uh, really uh, the formula that I will work with. And in particular, I'm going to use this symbol HL in, in, uh, as a triplet, of course, to a Haldane. This is the Haldane to the potential poten uh, operator <coughs> of uh, angular momentum uh, L. <coughs> now, uh, for L larger or equal to one, uh, the, uh, the, relative, uh, the relevant scattering parameters in uh, the arbitrary angular momentum channels, they are uh, given by a variational principle. It, it is well known for L equal to zero in, in, uh, in uh, three dimension that you can define scattering lengths by minimizing, a, minimizing an energy functional. I could write down here the scattering equation, but just for lack of space or, or because it, it will not be used, I am refraining from doing that. I'm just saying the scattering, the scattering parameters for every L are well defined by this minimization principle here. And if you have a hard disk of diameter R0, then this value of this parameter is that the radius to the power 2L. So you could, if you like, you could say the L wave scattering length, you take this parameter and take the one over 2L root of it, but uh, that is not really needed. And uh, it's maybe more natural to keep these parameters which do not then have the dimension of a length, but uh, a length to the power 2L. Now, this is for L equal to zero. Since we are in two dimensions, uh, one has to uh, uh, treat uh, the L equal to zero case especially, uh, and this is more for completeness. Uh, don't uh, attach too much uh, importance to this, but uh, for comp mathematical completeness, as you say here, that one, one has to define it a little bit differently because of the, uh, that the green function for, for, uh, for uh, L equal to zero behaves logarithmically. So this is the uh, uh, precise definition here. One shows that this is really independent of, of, of R. And, uh, and then uh, uh, one gets uh, that for hard disk potential this uh, lowest uh, scattering parameter is just uh, the radius. Uh, last remark here is that if you scale a VA, then you scale these scattering parameters. So you scale them by, by uh, this A to the power uh, 2L. And uh, B0 is, is, is gets, gets multiplied by, by A. I mean, this formula does not work for L equal to zero then it will, will depend at all, but uh, that's because of this uh, uh, peculiarities here in the two dimensions. Now, recall again our formula for the Hamiltonian. Uh, 
it is the free Hamiltonian, then there is a potential, and then there is a scaled, uh, yeah, which is, is scaled in this way by the uh, parameter A. And our main result tells that uh, this Hamiltonian is in a precise sense, which is stated uh, below, is given by uh, the whole time pseudo potential. Uh, to this with this parameter to the power 2l if uh, if you consider energies of the order a to the 2l and there is no l of course here so you are really have to uh, understand this that you are looking at the, um, the lowest energies of this uh, operator here on different scales and on every scale then you will have have a different uh, uh, different hold and uh, potential. This is, of course, reminiscent to this uh, naive expansion where you expanded the, the interaction, then you had, of course, many terms. Well, here it is not written like this. It, it's written in this way that you, or uh, the understanding is that you have to consider this uh, operator here. And then you have, as we will see, have to zoom in, so to say, on, on the energy scales of order A to the 2L. And then the statement is that the operator on that scale is uh, the Holden uh, uh, shooter potential times a well-defined prefactor. And here is a precise theorem where any L, the operator A to the minus 2L of H uh, A, to compensate uh, this here, it converts now uh, to uh, the Holden uh, uh, to the potential with a well-defined uh, prefactor given by the interaction potential, uh, the scattering parameter of the uh, interaction potential. And this holds in strong resolvent sense, which means that for every positive mu and every psi in the Hilbert space, the resolvent like this here, it converts, oops, uh, sorry, it converts to the resolvent of the holding uh, pseudo potential operator projected onto this uh, space PL, which was the subspace of the lowest Landau level with angular momentum at least L. And this uh, convergence is strong. And there is a special uh, case for L equal to zero, which is stated here. Now, here are uh, some remarks to make, make this more, uh, uh, to add some uh, further understanding to, to this. I, I stress once again, I have done that on several occasions, that uh, the effective Hamiltonians, they are not given by simply projecting uh, into these uh, subspaces of angular momentum, at least L. So, whoops. Uh, uh, That would give here uh, a to the two l as as we uh, as we want, but the factor here would not be this uh, scattering uh, uh, parameter b l, but simply simply a moment of this potential. Uh, uh, for for people working on on uh, dilute Bose gases, uh, mean field limits, etc. This uh, you you are familiar with this that in in some approximations you will get uh, formulas where you have the integrals over the potentials. But if you really uh, dig deep into the matter, then you will see that that should be replaced by scattering length. It's the same effect here. That uh, this formula is in general uh, wrong or or not uh, not accurate. It em emerges as an approximation uh, for. Uh, sufficiently uh, you, you can uh, if you if you take a, a perturbation parameter here in front of the v and then take lowest uh, uh, approximation of the true formula then you will get to this but this is just an approximation and uh, so this is a, once again this uh, important uh, remark that the short scale structure of the eigenfunctions of, of uh, the Hamiltonian here, it leads to an effective renormalization of the prefactor. Now, and here, uh, 
is a statement that uh, an analogous result holds in three dimensions with an additional confinement in the third direction. That was in fact uh, uh, how uh, the lowest L case in the bosonic uh, situation was treat uh, treated in this paper of, of Levin and Seiringer I uh, quoted before, namely you have a, a confining potential in the uh, direction uh, uh, perpendicular to the uh, plane where the particles move. And, uh, and you can uh, uh, do everything there and, and uh, it, it turns out that, uh, that what it uh, does is essentially just to modify uh, the uh, scattering parameters. I'm not writing down the formula. This is just a certain uh, spherical average of, over the two dimensional uh, parameters. <clears throat> so this is, uh, now, uh, so what uh, I, I have here really is how you should think about it. You should think about, look at the last line here, the scaling of HA by A to the minus 2L. It really acts as a magnification glass on the, uh, on the spectrum. So uh, here is a situation in the fermionic uh, case. That is the reason for these funny uh, powers here because uh, you do not have uh, all uh, angular momenta in, in, in the fermionic uh, case the Laughlin uh, functions. And uh, so the states of the, order, uh, the energies of order A squared, they are described by the active, uh, effective Hamiltonian H1. And if you now zoom on the kernel of this operator, then you find H3 as an effective Hamiltonian describing energies with uh, order A6, etc. And, and you can go on like this. So there is an increasing uh, uh, rather uh, decreasing <laughs> sequence of scales here and your uh, magnification glass, uh, you, magnify, uh, you multiply by A to the minus 2L to, to make this visible. <clears throat> now this convergence theorem can in fact, you can add uh, an external uh, uh, term, uh, either an external potential or additional interaction terms if you like, and uh, now when I, I write this convergence, I always mean convergence in the sense of resolvance. It's simply nicer to write it like this, but please understand this is a convergence, not, not in, the, in the sense of applying this to Psi, but the resolvent applied to a, a Psi, then it, it con converges. And this can be uh, easily generalized to uh, the previous results where there was no K here. And, uh, First of all, for bounded K, it's clear, but it's also for sure the unbounded K, it's possible to uh, prove this. And if K is a confining external potential, let's say uh, in particular a quadratic uh, trapping potential, then the convergence really holds in the norm resolved sense. And that implies converts of all eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And this means now in particular, if we apply this to the special case of uh, X squared, that uh, uh, for a sufficiently weak uh, 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 confinement, then this will con uh, uh, convert to the Laughlin state Psi L plus one as A goes to zero. And uh, there's a special result here for L equal to zero. So uh, now, uh, uh, now this was just for, for, a, for a small lambda uh, as, uh, uh, in front of this uh, confinement operator. If you, you can do it more generally. And uh, I want to write it here in a way which uh, also may be familiar to some of, some of you, which uh, uh, have seen this in the, in the bosonic uh, context and for the lowest L, <clears throat> that uh, this uh, quadratic uh, confining uh, potential that is really equivalent to the angular momentum operator in the lowest lambda level plus uh, a constant. And so uh, 
so what one is uh, considering here is really uh, the Haldane operator here with this definite parameter, uh, but uh, let me have here a, a general name for it. It was some eight pi BL, but here is just some gamma it's quite generally. And if you consider now operators of this uh, kind here, uh, then uh, you have here this uh, uh, pseudo potential operator and then you have here the angular momentum operator and you have two parameters and these two uh, operators here commute and you can ask for for uh, for the spectrum of this for the ground state of this and uh, to uh, to find the ground state you have to uh, to look at uh, the joint spectrum of these two operators here and uh, uh, plot that down and uh, then uh, you will have a, a, a curve which is uh, 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 called the Eurast curve and uh, the ground state of this operator is determined by the points with the line of slope um, minus, uh, uh, minus, uh, minus lambda over gamma touches the Eurast curve. So here is a picture which uh, you have maybe also seen many of you. This is uh, uh, was written for the simplest case. Therefore, uh, that's the reason why here is a gross Peter Yevsky. Uh, just forget that. That's completely irrelevant. It's just to show you qualitatively how this uh, curve looks like. Here is the interaction, which would in our case be the Haldane uh, potentials. Here is the angular momentum. And here is the Laughlin uh, state which uh, however is uh, is here written uh, without any prefactor but there is of course an uh, uh, there is a, 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 a prefactor l squared in fact which is not written here and uh, and the joint spectrum consists of all these points here this is a uh, uh, based on uh, numerical computations. There are very few uh, rigorous results about this. And then uh, you take a, a, a line with this definite slope and then you uh, try to fit it here and, and then you can find here uh, points which would then correspond to the ground states for different uh, angular momenta. Now, uh, there is one such picture in fact for every little l. Uh, you should think of uh, if you go to the next L, there is a new picture here coming, uh, starting here, so to say, uh, to the right, uh, looking similar and going on, and there is really an infinite cascade of such pictures. But uh, here is, so to say, the general, general idea. You see that already in this uh, simplest case. Now, uh, uh, now I will want to say a little bit about the proof. I will not say very much, but just the main ingredients. Uh, <clears throat> the proof is not uh, not long, but it's uh, a bit uh, nevertheless uh, tricky and uh, uh, technical. Um, and but you can of course read uh, read about it in the original paper. But here is uh, the main thing is that. Uh, it's very convenient in our case uh, is to uh, uh, to use the concept of gamma convergence of uh, quadratic forms and the reason is that uh, that's a well established fact that the uh, gamma convergence of quadratic forms is equivalent to the strong resolvent uh, convergence of operators and the proof of our main theorem is based on that now, what are the quadratic forms we are considering? So that's on the one hand, it's the one defined by the Hamiltonian HA here. Let me call that function FA. That is this, uh, uh, so it is the expectation value of Psi. Uh, and uh, this uh, FA is, uh, can be infinite. If Psi is not in the form domain of, of HA, then this will be infinite. And we want to compare this with uh, the quadratic form defined by the Haldane due to potential operator. So we de define uh, GL uh, equal to that uh, quadratic form and then the infinite otherwise. And here is, uh, uh, well, at the same time, so to say, the definition and the statement, this is a, a, a 
this is a proposition and uh, and if you if you read it uh, and are, fa are familiar with the concept of a gamma convergence you will see that the, what is claimed here is the gamma convergence of this f to uh, this uh, g in with, with this uh, parameter in front and uh, namely that if I have some sequence of, of uh, uh, parameters going to zero and some sequence of vectors which goes to a, a, a converges to a, to, a, to a given vector weekly, then I have here a lower bound in this form here. And on the other hand, if I take any psi and any sequence with uh, uh, which tends to zero, then there exists a sequence which converges, so I, so I have an upper bound. And to go together with a lower bound, I could then just as well say equal here. So there are these two uh, ingredients of this uh, gamma convergence. If you have not uh, heard about this concept before, uh, there is no hope that you will grasp it immediately now, but uh, maybe this is an incentive for you to, to, to look more uh, closely into this uh, very elegant concept. And remember, and that is what we are using, that it is equivalent to the resolvent converses. Okay. Now, uh, how do we now prove this? Uh, there are, uh, as usual, there is a, the, there is an uh, there is an upper bound which is, is, is here and then there is a lower bound which is here and uh, um, uh, the lower bound is used by uh, is uh, based on a, a, a variant of uh, something which is called in the literature the Dyson lemma and has been used uh, a lot since uh, uh, well, invented by Dyson in, in uh, 1957, but has been used a lot since uh, uh, actually um, uh, the, uh, f from this first paper of, of uh, Elliot and myself on the ground state, on the uh, ground state energy of the dilute Bose gas. Uh, this uh, lemma is um, basically that says, the spirit of it is that for, for uh, Proving upper bounds uh, of uh, Hamiltonians with uh, strong potentials, you can, uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, proving lower bounds for, uh, for Hamiltonians with strong potentials, you can uh, uh, reduce it to uh, a simpler uh, situation where the potential is, is weak but you have to sacrifice kinetic energy. And this uh, general idea, it uh, takes in the present context, it, it takes the following form, which uh, I cannot elaborate on and maybe you will not see immediately what is uh, going on here, except that you see here that on the left side, there is here the full kinetic energy here and the interaction potential. And here is uh, something, uh, so to say, much uh, softer, where uh, where you just uh, integrate here, uh, 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 and there is no no kinetic kinetic energy here, and and no hard potential here. So, uh, so you, uh, the only uh, thing I can also hope uh, that you will uh, get an idea of is this general. Uh, 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 principle that you uh, you sacrifice kinetic energy, which is here, for uh, and uh, what you gain by that is you get something much softer, which does not where you replace the uh, uh, strong external potential by something softer. It, it, so that is, so to say, the general idea. And this is the form, the Dyson lemma. It is not the original Dyson lemma. It's the spirit of the Dyson lemma. And this is a concrete form it, uh, it attains here. Now, uh, so this is all I have to say about the lower bound. <laughs> uh, the upper bound is uh, also, I have very little to say about that, except that uh, we uh, consider here a sequence. Here comes uh, the, uh, 
the scattering solutions or the minimizer for the scattering parameters comes into play. And then we use the varial, uh, variational principle and we, uh, we do computations. So essentially we, uh, <clears throat> we can also rely on results from this uh, previous analysis of uh, Mathieu and, and Robert 2009. And in that way, one obtains the upper bound. Now, so I have uh, now talked for 45 minutes. I guess that was what I was supposed to do. So I can now uh, sum up. <clears throat> so uh, we have rigorously defined Haldane shooter potential operators for many body quantum systems with strong uh, short range interactions subject to a homogeneous magnetic field or to rapid rotation. You should not forget that. That may, as I said, be the most important uh, application. In particular, we have shown that uh, the Laughlin uh, wave function theory emerged as limits of ground states of such models under suitable uh, confinement, really uh, precise limits in a pre very precise sense. Now, compared to the naive projection onto the lowest lambda level, the prefactors of the Pschota potentials, they are renormalized by contributions from higher lambda levels and involve the scattering length instead of the momentum moments of the interaction potential. This is uh, so to say the take home message. Now open problems. Uh, I have uh, not, uh, not done any uh, written any uh, quantitative estimates about the N dependence. And uh, uh, that is certainly possible, but uh, uh, it's it's tricky and and uh, and uh, in the simplest case uh, there are such uh, estimate concrete estimates but they are not optimal and here they become even uh, more complicated so this has really not been uh, explored thoroughly so this remains still an open problem to quantify the end dependence now. Uh, Maybe, uh, uh, well, uh, mathematically a more uh, challenging and uh, interesting problem and also quite interesting is the, the question of the spectral gap of the Holden shooter potential. Namely, Holden conjectures that uh, his operators that there is a spectral gap which is bounded below independently of n and that would have important uh, consequences concerning stability and incompressibility. In fact, many people uh, look at this uh, spectral gap as the essential uh, uh, ingredient for, for uh, the stability of the quantum quantum Hall effect, the fractional quantum Hall effect. But mathematically, this is a very difficult problem. And well, first one would think, why is that? Uh, after all, the whole day, uh, uh, Potential is just a sum of, uh, of uh, projections. Remember, even if it looks, if you write it as a derivative of the delta functions, this looks very unbounded. But if you take a closer look, you see that it is really a sum of projections of bounded operators. And, uh, and, pro and projections, of course, you know exactly what the spectral gap is in, in the projections. And if these projections would commute, you would immediately have the spectral gap. That would be no uh, question. So the reason is that these projections do not commute. If the variables, if you have a pair ij and another uh, ik, then these uh, uh, corresponding uh, projections do not commute. And that is, uh, and, and their, their uh, number uh, increases quadratically with n squared. So this is a really a very difficult problem. There is a one dimensional version of the problem, uh, which is easier. It is obtained uh, essentially by taking the two dimensional plane and rolling it up to a, a, a torus and making this torus very thin. And then it becomes a one dimensional problem. That is uh, certainly easier because you don't have this uh, uh, increase here of, 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 uh, of the number of, of non-zero commutators. 
but it's still uh, very non-trivial. And there is a, a recent paper, I guess it is now uh, has appeared even uh, maybe in communications by Bruno Nachtigalli, Simone Watzel and uh, Amanda Young, where they uh, uh, prove a spectral gap. In the title, if you just read the title, you would maybe uh, be led to, to think that uh, this problem was solved. But if you uh, look what they're really doing, then you see they are doing a one dimensional version. So it's uh, keep that in mind. But that's still a uh, highly non trivial work and very interesting paper. So that is the status of that. Okay, so now I have come to an end and uh, I. Uh, uh, just want to thank you very much for, for your attention, for the opportunity to speak here. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Jakob, for a very nice talk. So I think now people can ask uh, questions uh, if they want. I think you can just uh, unmute uh, yourself and just ask questions if uh, you want to. I do have a couple, but let's see whether there are other. Okay, nobody asks uh, Jakob uh, one question. So you have the norm resolvent in the confined case, otherwise strong resolvent. Yes. Is that optimal? I, I mean, let me put it differently. If uh, uh, a convergence is strong and not, uh, not norm resolvent, then the spectrum uh, could uh, jump, uh, could shrink suddenly in the limit. Could such a thing happen here? Well, I guess so, but you would, well, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, well, uh, the, I guess the main uh, uh, point about this uh, uh, norm convergence here the other, uh, is that you get convergence of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So it is uh, the norm convergence is really the best that you, uh, it is an uh, optimal situation. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, some uh, pathological situations could occur if you only have, have a strong convergence. Yeah, that's the pathology is usually the, that uh, if, if you, look at the spectrum, then uh, in the limit, uh, it can suddenly shrink. Yeah. And uh, the question is whether, that's the question whether the, the result of the strong, uh, strong resolvent coordinate is optimal or uh, whether you can hope uh, to, uh, to improve it in this situation. Yeah, well, uh, I guess, well the, well, the result is just uh, what it is. <laughs> uh, so this is the theorem, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, and, and what uh, and uh, and this is of course uh, still a, a a valid picture, uh, but certainly things are much nicer and cleaner if you have really the norm convergence, and that's what you what you uh, typically have. I mean, you have your your system is confined in a. In, in fact, uh, Haldane originally confined it uh, brutally by simply putting it on a sphere. <laughs> so that is a normal situation. <clears throat> but this is a, certainly a valid, uh, valid uh, question about the mathematical uh, situation. <clears throat> General. Thanks. So let me just make a comment, a technical remark. So for participants, if they want to, to ask questions, they have to raise their hand and then, uh, then they will be unmuted. So just uh, if you are not able to unmute yourself, just raise their hand, uh, their hand and then we will take care of that. So any other question? Probably Nicola wanted to ask one. Okay. I do have uh, one actually, so well, mm -hmm. in fact, more than one, but probably I just ask one and then we see if there are others. No, it's about the, the case. Uh, so you said that if you put the projector in, well, in, in the convergence, say in front of HA, in that case, you don't get the scattering length or the scattering parameters, uh, so the, no. you call them, but rather the integral of the potential. Yes. Correct. 
Now, my question is, uh, so what happens if it is not finite? First, first of all, this uh, integral of the potential, you don't get any convergence at all, I guess, in that case. And uh, well, related to that, uh, so in order to prove convergence, when you, if you want to get the integral of the potential, I guess you don't need the Dyson lemma. Is this correct or? Uh... Well, I, well, the, uh, the... Uh, well, the situation where you are using this Tyson lemma, that's when you are really uh, proving uh, the result I was uh, saying, uh, so stating here, uh, namely, uh, namely this one. Uh, so, uh, so, so there you do not, uh, the coefficients uh, in front of the pseudopotentials are not the integrals of the potentials, they are these PLs which are obtained by, by minimizing uh, um, this uh, uh, scattering uh, uh, problem. So, uh, so that uh, uh, simply uh, uh, is valid. Of course, you, you can ask you know, under what conditions are, are these coefficients here finite? Uh, if that is your-, your... No, no, what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is that if you put the projector in, yeah. in the le on the left-hand side, Yes. Then you don't get the, the, the scattering parameters. No, you get no. just the integrals, right? Just 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 got the integral and, and well, think of hard course. Then then all these integrals are simply infinite. Are so, meaningless. So, but so, I'm so, saying so, so it's meaningless. So in that case, uh, do I need the, the Dyson lemma in that case, or uh, I, can I well, just? Uh, well, precisely for 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 hard course, you need the course. Dyson okay. lemma. Mm -hmm. Precisely, and also uh, generally. To say. I mean, there are also situations where these uh, these integrals are finite, but they do, uh, do not give the correct coefficients. They okay. are a good approximation. They, they then the integrals are so to say the first born approximation to these. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you need the hard pulse is so to say the extreme case. It's just a curiosity, but maybe this is also a curiosity to uh, other uh, for other people. So, uh, is there any relation with point interactions in two dimensions? For instance, in the L equal to zero case of or S wave. Uh, well, I think it's the. Yeah. Well, uh, as I said, formally. Formally, uh, you see uh, these pseudo potentials. No, oh, whoops. Uh, formally, these pseudo potentials are are uh, uh, are uh, where is this contact interactions uh, are, are, are contact interactions uh, and this makes here here perfect sense because uh, the functions you are uh, dealing with are analytic you see so uh, yeah, my so, question is, what happens in the rest of the Hilbert space? So, so to say, so if the function is not analytic, so uh, or maybe I don't know if it makes sense, but can you think a relation? Uh, if there is well, this uh, Holden potentials will will uh, are simply simply infinite. In, infinite. In the, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just uh, it makes sense only there. You know, just, yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So, any any more questions? Let's see, I don't see any uh, raised. So I think we can uh, just thank again uh, Jacob for the talk. So thank okay. you very much, Jacob. So then I simply stop now here. My <laughs> that's it. Well, or, or uh, well, you will you will automatically throw me out here. So no, yeah. I think you just have to uh, sh stop sharing, and then we we just yeah. Uh, move to the next speaker, yes, which is by sure.